Welcome back to Life with Moyo. Doesn't that look delicious? So today on my newest video, you're cooking with me, and we're actually going to the grocery store, the best grocery store ever, H-E-B. And we are here right now. I want you to come along with me as we go to the produce aisle and we pick out the items that are going to be needed to cook the red snapper. Also, we're making mashed potatoes with two cheeses that we picked from this section of H-E-B. They had a wide variety of cheeses, which really just blew me over. And we're also making asparagus. So right now, we are just loading the groceries into the back seat of the car. And here we are right now. We're showing you the ingredients that we use to cook the red snapper and everything else that was on the side. So right now, I am peeling my potatoes. This is very therapeutic to me. I actually thoroughly enjoy <laughs> peeling potatoes. Everyone else is like, I hate this. But with this tool, my sister actually gave me it's really good i was actually just using a very sharp knife which can be very dangerous so just watch this and we're just peeling the potatoes usually i use about four to five potatoes and we are seasoning the water for the boil i am rinsing my potatoes peeling a little bit more cleaning up cleanness is next to godliness <laughs> and I just love this trash can I don't have to touch and we are cleaning up and preparing for the asparagus so what you would do when you make when you're boiling your potatoes a lot of people make they don't make theirs from scratch anymore I've seen a, a great debate on Facebook about that you peel the potatoes and you cut them in four sections and once I get them in the four sections I put them in the water as I'm doing here and now we're getting the asparagus ready. I um, thawed the asparagus out, and I'm evening them out, making sure that there's no, you know, like frost flakes. And I took a pause because you don't want to put the asparagus in the oven too soon, and they get a little soggy when you do that. Right now, I am cutting the fins off of the fish. It's a very daunting task. Uh, this was my first time actually doing this, as so I made a video on it, and. I know now when I get a fish, I think you can request to have the fins taken off and the bones taken out of the fish. Um, I'm going to get that next time because that was kind of hard, even with this knife being extremely sharp. So I'm cutting three slits, three support slits, it just depends on how big your fish is, in, uh, on each side of the fish to make sure that the seasoning is getting inside of the fish that is really you know a, a good tactic some people actually put like thyme or they put like different herbs inside of that fish but we just use seasoning so I'm cutting the fourth slit and this knife again is was very very sharp and it did take a while for me to get those those slits through so this is the obey the garlic powder slap your mama and the Himalayan pink sauce I did kind of press the openings open so that the seasoning can get really inside because when you start to cook, you want to make sure that your seasoning gets inside of the fish. When you start to grill, some of the seasoning will fall off or when you start to fry the fish, seasoning will fall off. You have to put a lot of seasoning on your red fish. I recently fell in love with Old Bay sauce. I did not know anything about it because I really wasn't. I really cook seafood, but I never use Obey. Now I will make sure that I always keep Obey in my cabinet of seasoning. Slap Your Mama is really good. Oh my God. Um, I actually use Slap Your Mama and the garlic powder on my eggs. I want to try a little Obey, but I don't want to go up extreme. So I'm opening up the fish to make sure that the seasoning is going inside. The next time we cook the red fish, I want to make sure that I overly season. Um, the garlic powder is really good, but it has to be put with something else. Even though it comes with parsley, I cooked earlier this week and it was just, I needed some more flavor because I like to taste my food. Flipping it over and we're doing the same thing on both sides. So putting the slap your mama, there's no order in this. You're just putting the seasonings on here. Now we're adding the flour. This is for if you're frying the redfish. I am putting the powder over the top. It's like a coating. And you're going to put it evenly on top of the fish. 
and you I pat it down just so it wouldn't be like an abundance of it and on the other side I think I forgot to put the extra slits and I'm just adding some more slits to make sure the seasoning is, is in there if you're anything like me like to taste your seasoning on your food then you're gonna do exactly what I did right here is my sister's hands I was, I was like is that me but it's my sister she is making the crawfish sauce this is her use, uh, cutting up the celery for the crawfish sauce I can definitely admit my sister's better cooked than me <laughs> but the crawfish sauce that she makes is really really amazing like it just doesn't make sense we actually made some more of it right after this it was really really good so you're going to cut it evenly she's cutting very small increments of the celery and then going over them again and making smaller cuts Look how good of a cutter she is. I'm so proud of her. Okay, so this is the onions. She's going to the onions right now. She cuts like Chef Ramsay. But this knife, I actually got it from HEB when I bought my pan. And the knife is very precise. So she's putting the butter in the pot, adding the celery. And then adding the onions. It doesn't matter what order you put it in, but you can just do it like this. Now she's all adding the garlic, the minced garlic. You have to keep minced garlic in the refrigerator if you want to cook. Now we are putting the fish in the grease and we're flipping it. Now the challenge for me came with flipping it. Okay, my sister is adding another seasoning, the paprika. Paprika is very strong, but it was so good. <laughs> Pink Himalayan salt. And the Obey. So basically with the crawfish sauce, you're actually making a paste. And it will turn actually into a sauce the more you cook it down. checking on my potatoes. Potatoes are very tiny. You have to be very patient. A lot of people, a lot of people like the uh, potatoes in the bag. <laughs> and here I am flipping the red fish. We are adding the parsley. Now we're adding the Half and half and half. This is when it's gonna make the actual sauce. You have to constantly, constantly whip it to make sure that it doesn't stick. Adding a little bit more. So now we have to flip the fish. And it this actually was the hardest part because the fish was so heavy. It may not look heavy, but it was extremely, extremely heavy. It's coming together. The more I cooked it down, the better it fit inside of my pan. But this is actually the biggest pan that we could, the pan that we could find. Make sure his little fin gets cooked. And I'm pressing it down to make sure the heat goes through. This is me being childish and picking his eye out. This is adding the garlic powder to the crawfish sauce. Now we're adding the crawfish tails. Don't be skimpy with the tails, girl. Okay, and you're going to continue to mix and mix and mix. Making sure the crawfish tails. She had a little bit more because she wants it to be thick. Okay, she did add some half and half uh, whipped cream, heavy whipped cream. 
but off camera we did add flour so for the thickness the recipe didn't require that but that's what we added so you have to add your own special touches to your liking and how you want the product to come out I, I always say that the recipes are only just like a semi instruction manual but you know you have to just do it to taste so some people like things a little different so it's cooking down now you start to see the difference in the sauce And I think that um, Bernard is was done cooking at this point because I don't see him over there anymore. That's a fish. I gave him a name. Okay, this is me making the asparagus. So I do whip these items that are on the side, the stop your mama, the garlic parmesan, um, and I do put the garlic salt with parsley. I put it with butter, and I put it in the microwave. I let it cook down. And it's already cooked now, and we're going to spread it evenly across the asparagus. I make sure that every part, you can see the flavor, you know, every part. A lot of people say, I hate asparagus, but I feel like they don't season it well. So that's why they don't like it, because I thoroughly enjoy it with my salmon every time. <laughs> so we're going to put this in the oven. And I usually leave it in there probably about five to seven minutes. It just depends. And I put that last because when you put it in there, like, prior, it can get soggy. So this is the coffee sauce. Doesn't that look yummy, guys? Oh, my God. Okay, the potatoes are finally done. As you can tell how long that took. That was a long time. We made everything else and the potatoes were still cooking. I love potatoes, guys. It's like an addiction. I can eat them every day. So now we're going to add the milk. I add a couple of splashes. We add some butter. You add butter for the thickness that you want your potatoes to be. Some people don't add a lot of butter. Stop your mama. We add the garlic salt, and it has a lot of seasons in it. And it's called nature seasoning. So good. And this is a garlic salt with parsley. So this is um, great cheese that we found. See the name of it on there. And we are going to grate the cheese. With this grater, the cheese goes in the middle. So if you say, where is the cheese going? It's going in the middle. You'll see, you'll see guys. Great for your life, honey. She is grating. <laughs> With other cheese, it was kind of soft. She said that it was soft. So the next time that we use that cheese, we just cut it in fours. So there's all of the cheese that we have. Okay, and now we're gonna just whip, whip, whip. Watch me whip. Watch me, Nay Nay. <laughs> we're going to just mash. We don't have a potato masher yet, but we're going to definitely get one, but I don't really see, like, the point of it because we use it. So this is the crawfish sauce going over Bernard. Oh, my God. It's so good, y'all. Like, I really wish I could just pick some off and give y'all some. It really was good. Me and Jasmine actually debated on what sauce we were going to put over Bernard and we found a lot of different recipes and this is the only one that we really could agree on like when she told me oh this is the one with crawfish I was like get that one that's the one that we're gonna get okay this is me cleaning anyone that knows me my kitchen's always clean when it's dirty I, I can't rest I clean my kitchen every night before I go to bed clean 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 and I'm using Methic. Um, it's a new brand. Well, it's not a new brand. It's a new scent. The proceeds go to at-risk teens. And actually, um, it's, it's people who are artistic and they have mental disabilities. And it's actually to support them. So I really love it. So this is a finished product. Can y'all see that? And my new favorite, Rosé. Oh, my God. Y'all, Bernard was so good. Just don't make them sick. And that wine was sick. 
goodbye guys thank you so much for cooking with moyo i'll see you in the next video